Floating point processing. This is a mysterious, legendary, and um, maybe boring topic. However, it's very important for you while you're mixing and mastering your tracks to understand what exactly it is and uh, why you should use it. So basically, most audio interfaces run at 24-bit integer or fixed point processing. Now, what that means is the math is fixed and um, it's actually, I don't really know exactly what it means, but I, I can tell you ex exactly what it'll do for you if you mix that way. So what I'm going to do right now, I have this track right here. This is a master. Currently, it's a 32-bit file. That doesn't really matter. It's, it's floating point. Um, but what matters is how we're going to render it. So right now, I have under File, Project Settings in Reaper. And under the Advanced tab, I have this on Track Mixing Bit Depth at 64-bit. Now what I'm going to do is change this fader right here. And I'm going to add 100 decibels, which is ridiculous. But just bear with me here. So I'm going to render this out to a 64-bit floating point file. Okay, so as you can see, we have a solid rectangle and it will sound horrible, but I'm not gonna play this for you for two reasons. Number one, Reaper, once it's over a certain decibel amount, it will automatically mute the master channel. So you're not gonna be able to hear that anyway. But number two, that's not what I'm going to do here. What I'm going to do is output four files. So here we just did a plus 100 decibel at 64 bit floating point. Now I'm going to do a negative 100 decibel so that it's very quiet. I'm going to, you know, so that's minus. I'm going to overwrite that. Now, one thing I have to say, though, is there's a little confusion in recording, mixing, and mastering in the box. Now, if you are solely mixing and mastering in the box, floating point is at its best advantage. If you're recording, there is no advantage to record at a floating point file. You're actually going to be wasting hard drive space if you do that. So... Floating point is really only a mixing and mastering in the box type of process. I don't recommend doing it any other way because when you have to interface with hardware or, um, you know, your, your hardware, again, is only usually 24-bit. And as far as I know, there are no 32-bit interfaces. And even if there were, it's not going to have the advantages of a software processor, as far as I know. And I'm specifically talking about the output. 24-bit is industry standard, fixed point, not floating point. So now I'm back in Reaper, or I've been in Reaper the whole time, but now I'm going to switch it under preferences to 24-bit track mix. Uh, we're still at minus 100. Now I'm going to render it as a 24-bit file. And as you can see, you, can, you can't really see anything. It's a nice thin line. Another advantage of floating point is that your actual mix channels can be clipped and then as a last step, you can bring your master track fader down. Whatever amount of distortions happening, you know, your, your, combined, your combined clipping, you know, if, once you play your file, it could say plus, you know, 20 decibels or whatever, which is a lot. I wouldn't, I wouldn't go that loud, but technically you could take that and have it sound still pretty nice. 
as you're about to see once I, uh, okay, so now I'm, I'm increasing that to 100 decibels. Again, I'm doing these extremes for a good reason here. Just so it's obvious the advantages. For real, real world mixing, th there are advantages. Basically, if I combine a bunch of 24 bit processes or plugins in a chain, the math as it's adding up and rounding imprecisely, you're going to have more errors, which result in um, truncation, aliasing. It's just nastiness that is bad digital audio. You don't want that. Okay, all those files are exported now. I still have my original track up here. I'm going to import them. I'm going to make sure these are all properly labeled first. And it looks like they are. Okay, so track two, I'm going to bring that up 100 decibels. I'm going to bring track two down 100 decibels. Uh, track three, 100. And track four, minus 100 decibels. And I'm going to make sure this is now back to 64-bit track processing. Otherwise, this will make no sense. Okay, so this is 24-bit. I'm gonna actually I'm gonna play the original first. I'm gonna switch back and forth between the original and the new export. Oh, wait a minute. Oh, okay. <laughs> See what I was saying earlier about um the master channel being automatically muted. That's exactly what Reaper just did because it said, "Hey, dummy, why are you, why is your track so loud?" I love that feature. So here we go. All right. All right, now let's compare that to the 64-bit file down here. And here's the original now. I don't hear an audi audible difference. Now, if you're wondering, you know, well, what is the difference? If you can't hear it in the 24-bit file, there's some fuzziness, there's noise that's a result of 24 bits dynamic range being at 144 decibels, I believe. That's the noise floor. And if you can't hear the difference, it's there. And if you, if you put some headphones on, you can definitely hear it more, which a lot of your listeners will be listening through headphones or earbuds. And now here is the difference to make it audible for you. I'm going to... Uh, Phase invert track two, and so these are the two tracks I want to compare, and I'm going to bring this up a little bit. Okay, so that's only a, a 16 decibel increase on the master master channel, and uh, it's there. And actually, just to compare it to the original, I hope this works. Yep, there it is. That is imprecise math, ladies and gentlemen. Now, to be fair, I'm going to bring this one over just to, just to show you what I'm talking about. Let me undo this first. So I am precise with my, <laughs> with my um, repositioning of items here. So solo and polarize. Look at that. Oh.
I I can't even hear anything on uh on my speaker here. So I don't know if that's a I, I guess that's just showing you how precise that is. That it's I mean, let's see. Okay, yeah, my my speaker's working. Hold up. Something's going on here. Okay, so measuring That's a 40 decibel difference. So let me, I'll try to bring that up. I don't have any, I mean, I, I see a meter moving, but I'm, I'm wondering, um, hold up. I'm wondering where that, I'm wondering where the actual noise is. It's not even registering. All right, you know, I have another idea. All right. All right, that's what I thought. Um, if you look at the, if you look at span in the corner right here, that's where the audible difference is out of hearing range and the range of most speakers. That's why I can't hear it because it's above my <laughs> my hearing level. Um, all the aliasing and distortion noise is thrown to the wolves or in and eating and gobbled up by um now your dog might be able to hear this but uh yeah i mean that again this is me bringing up the i mean that that's that's incredible floating point can do some cool things now here is the noticeable difference blatantly noticeable i'm going to i'm going to bring this back over to where it was approximately Actually, it doesn't matter. I'm, I'm not going to use that anymore anyway. Okay, so these are the files that were brought up very, very loud, and now they're brought down. I'm going to end up having to bring this up a little bit louder, but for right now, yeah, you can't hear it yet. Now you can. Oh, that sounds lovely. That's some heavy metal. Take this off before I forget. Oh yeah, so again, that's our integer file, and here is our 64-bit file. Now remember, this was clipped. Look at it. Look at both these files. These are these are rectangles. You know, solid rectangles. <laughs> But with the magic of floating point and bringing the fader down 100 decibels, <laughs> it's beautiful. And just to show you the difference, I'm going to try, try this. It should work. I don't need to show you the difference. You can hear it. Jeez. <laughs> Horrible. Just absolutely. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I didn't mean to hurt your ears there. Yeah, just absolutely horrible. Integer, you know, once you clip it, it's clipped. And I mean, you can bring it back with certain programs, but it, it's, it's never as good as this lovely... No audible difference. Um, the math is just so much better. Now again, do not record into a floating point file and think that you can distort your channels or clip your channels during the recording phase. It's not going to happen. It will sound horrible. 
you can only do whatever your interface allows. And in this case, your interface is 24 bit or maybe it's 16. Who knows? Regardless, and this is this is a myth. Recording into floating point will not get you the same benefits that you get while mixing and mastering. It's not the same thing. There's no advantage to it. There's a big disadvantage in the file. The file um, size of a 64-bit file or a 32-bit file is bigger than a 24-bit file. So my suggestion, and this is what I do every time I record, record at 24-bit. And if you are bouncing tracks, if you're freezing tracks, or if you are rendering tracks that will be mastered, then use floating point. A lot of mastering houses support floating point files. I would send a little short, you know, one or two second test file to your mastering house if you're having somebody else do it. Send them that file, a short little file, just to make sure they, they can support whatever your doll's floating point output is. Absolutely, floating point is the way to go when mixing in the box. If you're using hardware then you need to keep your gain staging proper and that will i'm going to talk more about gain staging and proper recording levels and all that in a separate video but for now just listen to me when i give you the advice of use floating point math there's no reason not to unless your doll doesn't support it so again floating point 32 bit or 64 bit awesome the only other problem you'll run into is if you are using a plugin that doesn't support 32 or 64 bit floating point you have to check your software manuals for that you know rtfm read the effing manual is always good advice and in this case it'll t it'll, it'll probably tell you like on the last two pages under tech specifications whether or not your um, plugin is 64 bit or 32 bit or if it's double precision, more than likely it's 48. But 48 is even 48 is better than 24 bit. So if your if your plugin supports double precision, then you're better off. But floating point is by far the best. And uh, I don't think we're going to go any farther past 64 bit. There's nobody out there who's distorting or you know making their their track go down 100 decibels but you know the point of this video was to show you once your processes start adding up and the math is getting ridiculous you're gonna have errors in your audio if you're mixing at 24 bit and this is becoming less and less of an issue but if you're using older software it still isn't an issue or if you're using plugins that aren't floating point it can be an issue because your your software will have to down convert or down sample and then up sample after your plugin is, is done doing its thing. So anyway, sorry to bore you, but this is very important things when you're mixing. If you're looking for a clean chain, good times. And uh, that's about it. I, I don't know what, anything else to say on the topic that without going into tech stuff that really doesn't matter to somebody recording and mixing music. So this has been Adam from realhomerecording.com. I will see you in the next video.